are these people? I brought this because I did not know. I didn't really hear much about this. Now, I had heard about Baltimore. UPS to close facilities in Portland and Baltimore, threatening thousands of jobs. And this is Tom Hall from, again, the World Socialist website. I brought two of their articles. And I have to say this year, their coverage on certain topics has been fantastic, whereas on others, I'm not such a big fan, but they're winning me over. And they're the only people talking from this perspective that I can find consistently on a regular basis. And I got to give them a lot of credit for that. Mm. They're talking about rank and file problems and they're talking to actual workers on a regular basis and they're finding out what are the actual problems. So what's happening in Baltimore, but now also in Portland, thanks to our wonderful friends at the Teamsters, uh huh. UPS is set to temporarily close two more of its hubs for retooling into automated facilities employing a fraction of the labor. Here comes the automation. The two facilities are its warehouses in Baltimore, Maryland, and the Swan Island facility in Portland, Oregon. All right. The Baltimore hub closure has already been widely reported and will affect approximately 540 workers when the facility closes at the end of this August. But the closure of Swan Island is being reported for the first time by World Socialist website on the basis of knowledgeable sources inside the building, Swan Island employs well over a thousand people. According to the source, Swan Island is expected to, to become fully automated as of quote unquote next year. Now, I don't know if everybody remembers or if, how many were watching here, but last year, Snow Hambo and I did a show called Nobody Wants to Work Anymore for about 15 episodes on INN. And it was when Snow first showed up here at the network. And we were kind of talking in DM threads about his looking for a job, my looking for a job. And it turned into talking about labor and talking about unions. And it was another summer of labor and a fall October. You know, it was like another strike Tober where you had the quote unquote, the stand up strike from General Motors. You had the, the writer strike and the actor strike that was happening simultaneously. There were a lot of people that were out of work. So we were talking about that. And mm. one of the things that we talked about also Just was the UPS. Thank you. UPS and the Teamsters. All right. Which were threatening. The Teamsters were threatening to strike all. I believe it was 330,000 UPS jobs at warehouses and drivers around the country. And mm. they were practicing marching. They were um, really getting loud, and UPS had walked away from the table, but the last week, a week before, they actually came back to the table, and for whatever reason, the Teamsters accepted the first offer that was brought to them by UPS rather than holding out and actually going through with a strike. And we said at the time, based upon what, and, and we did a massive criticism of the UPS agreement with the Teamsters, um, one of the things that it would not protect against is this specific thing, which is automation and cutting jobs. Um, they also didn't even get 10,000 part-timers converted to full-time, and there were more than 170,000 part-time workers. It didn't make any sense. It's just because UPS doesn't want to pay full-time benefits and give out full-time hours, and they're being cheap, while they pay out tens of millions of dollars to their executive board. It's gross as shit. Himbo will tell you. Just ask him. Anna Mayer says, I love that show. Nobody wants to work anymore. Bring it back. You know, we've been talking about doing something yeah. like that. At least Reef and I did. I haven't talked to Himbo about that, but Himbo is now doing two shows on the network. He's doing Snow Himbo Gaming on Saturday nights, and he's now joined Greg, uh, the Big Mad Crab, over at Politically Homeless on Thursday nights at 9 o'clock Eastern. So check that out. Um, Getting back to this, Right, that Swan Island is expected to become fully automated as of next year. Now, that could be the end of next year, but still, you're looking at 18 months out at most. The closures are part of an escalating assault on jobs as part of the company's network of the future. In a meeting earlier this year with top investors, UPS executives explained this restructuring program would 
aim to close 200 facilities and automate everything. This is on top of 12,000 mostly white-collar job cuts already announced this year. That's not good. The automation-driven cuts at UPS are part of a global jobs bloodbath by major corporations, and this is where I wanted to talk about what's happening in the general labor market. U.S.-based corporations alone have already announced around 1 million layoffs since the start of, late la since the start of last year, according to an outplacement firm, Challenger Gray and Christmas. God, is that like Lloyd Christmas? Christmas? Is that Lloyd Christmas from, from <laughs> Dumb and Dumber? I hope not. A separate, a separate I, I study. I hope so, honestly. Well, that would be cool to... God, could you imagine having your last name be Christmas? <laughs> Sorry. Sorry to go off on a tangent there, but that just kind of... Christmas. Christmas. I'm going to call you Christmas. No, no, not Christmas. Uh, <laughs> Come on. It's you, the, the Grinch who stole Christmas. I mean, there's so many things you could do with that name. A separate study yep. found that four in 10 business leaders expect artificial intelligence to be a major factor in layoffs in their industries this year. Forget the fact that they're making record profits, okay, and they're squeezing the fuck out of workers to begin with, and they're using this AI, quote unquote, as an excuse to further cut fat and make shit worse everywhere. Look fat. Instead of advances in labor-saving technologies to ease the burden of work and improve living conditions for the vast majority, under capitalism, they're being used to squeeze out every last ounce of profit from the working class. Huh, didn't I just say that? Uh -huh. The jobs of as much as 80% of US, UPS's inside workforce are threatened by the automation drive. According to one HR insider, well, it sounds like the packaging and shipping industry need... It's going to have a mass exodus. About 90% of the existing UPS facilities yeah! are... Fire! They're conventional. Um, uh, yeah. So, meaning that a single package might be touched by 10 people as it goes from truck to truck to truck. The loading, mm -hmm. sorting, bagging... Sorting for reload and physically loading a truck again are all done by union employees in a conventional building, so it's much slower and far more prone to error. So what do they want to do? They want to cut it down to two people touching a package versus ten. Unloading is done by hand. Okay, everything in between. Sorting, scanning, routing, etc. All done by computers. And finally, it's reloaded by hand. All right. Um, that's bad. New automated hubs employ only a fraction of the traditional workforce. The company's new Velocity Hub in Louisville, Kentucky, requires only 200 people to move 350,000 packages a day. Based on this, it's reasonable to assume that the Baltimore Hub will reopen with a workforce of a little more than 100 people, while Swan Island will reopen with a little more than 200. So they're going to cut 80% of the heads. Jesus. According to UPS itself, these layoffs are made possible by labor certainty provided by the new Teamsters contract with the bureaucracy rammed through its 340,000 members at UPS employing massive fraud, falsely claiming it represented a historic victory. Man, did I get into arguments uh -huh. with people about that that still are arguing with me and telling me that UPS drivers are now all making $170,000 a year and they want to go work there. Yeah, you go sit in a hot truck for three and a half hours oh, a day. shit. Here we go again. Yeah. Um, oh. Soon after the contract was ratified, UPS began laying off entire sort shifts at hubs around the country, including Swan Island and Baltimore. <laughs> what a surprise. The Teamsters yeah. still have not even acknowledged the job cuts or the network of the future. What a surprise there, too. Sean O'Brien's been silent. Earlier this year, he held a so-called webinar lasting only a few minutes, referring vaguely to a contract enforcement campaign, quote-unquote. In fact, the contract contains no provisions against facility closures for the use of technology to eliminate jobs. 
or the use of technology to eliminate jobs. The company is required only to give 45 days notice before such cuts are carried or carried out. And they're doing that. Yes, those trucks don't even have proper AC. So much for profits for upgrading USV, UPS vehicles. No, what they agreed to was only putting air conditioning in vehicles going forward January 1st of this year. And they agreed to put fans in all the existing vehicles. They did outfit and provide them with fans. When confronted, Which, yeah, that's, okay, first of all, I yeah. want you to go back and picture Ace Ventura, pet detective, when he's stuck in the rhino and he has that little fan he's got to tap while drowning in his own sweat. I want you to think about that, right? Like, <laughs> like that's, yeah, a fan. Thanks, guys. It's 110. Like, right? What? You're in a metal box. Yeah, a fan's super helpful. Thanks. When he was confronted at a local meeting in Portland earlier this year by a group of workers, a member of the national bargaining team blurted out that UPS had a right to lay off workers. Of course they do, because you didn't fight for them. Yeah. A source in Swan Island told you the World Social... Well, sure. I mean, he's also a member of the union. I don't know how greedy he is, per se, but they all Not made him. a deal. Yes. The company... Right. But yes, they're greedy dirtbags for sure. You know, again, it was the union, the pilots and the company management themselves that made this deal kind of behind the scenes and ba and came back to the table effectively to announce it without really telling anyone what it was going to be, then having them vote on it and railroading this thing through and telling all their district, their local captains, you better, you better push this through. We had one that said no, and man, did they get in trouble for that. They changed their tune and flipped it in a day. A source in Swan Island told the World Socialist website that the bureaucrats were well aware of the automation plans, but have not said anything to avoid a panic. In other words, that mo workers might mobilize independent of the sellout union officials to stop the layoffs, which they won't. They'll just start quitting and getting other jobs, and then UPS will have to either replace them or pay more money to get more people in, and they don't want to see a mass panic and a mass exodus until this plan is executed. They just want to keep these people on the hook, which is so fucked up. Meanwhile, at the, at the new Teamsters administration, all the injustice, hailed by pseudo left quarters as the leaders of a resurgent reform movement in the U.S. <laughs> trade unions. Uh huh. Uh. Thanks, Jonah Furman. Are openly courting. There's definitely an episode of the Justice League where there's a villains union. I guarantee you. You right. know, like right. that's definitely a thing. But the Teamsters um, are openly courting the extreme right now. This is where I disagree somewhat with World Socialist website. O'Brien has met numerous times with Donald Trump and is slated to speak at the Republican National Convention this month which will have the character of a fascist rally. Uh, uh -huh. Stop you know, politicizing your union you at know, all. How about you, that? How about you that? Were doing, you How were about doing that? great defending workers until then and keeping this apolitical. Now, the fact that O'Brien has requested to speak at both the RNC and the DNC conventions tells me that he wants the voice of workers to be heard across both sides of the corporate spectrum. And that is not a bad thing. I don't want to alienate him from going out and speaking to a Republican friendly audience and speaking on behalf of the Teamsters. I'd rather him do it than just about anybody else. I mean, I'd rather him. I'd rather him speak to workers. That's what I would rather him do. He, he does that every but, day. You know, what do I know? He does that every day, but mm. he's also been given a slot to speak Can't at do both that every day when you're meeting with politicians one day. Sorry. All right. Neither the DSA oh. nor its house organ Jacobin Mag magazine has given any accounting oh. for how a figure whom they hailed as a key ally in the fight for union democracy has turned out to be a fascist sympathizer. Only in the fact that he also made a deal with Joe fucking Biden. Only if you're calling Joe Biden as fascist as Donald Trump. I hope you are. It doesn't sound like you. it. I just want your vote. Uh, it doesn't sound like it, but 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 
Don't be rude. Don't be rude. Meanwhile, meanwhile, uh, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. Uh. Yeah, we're sorry. We're sorry. Meanwhile, opposition is building among the rank and file at UPS, except they signed a contract and they got nothing for five years. The UPS workers rank and file committee formed last year to oppose the sellout contract has issued statements, strongly worded letters, demanding answers on the layoffs and calling on workers to organize themselves against the layoffs in rebellion against the union bureaucracy. You voted for these guys. In an open letter to Sean O'Brien in April, the committee declared Teamsters officials were deliberately concealing information on the layoffs and demanded the full release of all information that bureaucracy has on where, how, and when the cuts will take place. Seems reasonable. Quote, the reason we're demanding this information is so that the rank and file has access to the critical information it needs to organize a fight against layoffs from below. We have no illusions that you and the rest of the bureaucracy will suddenly see the light and come to our side. You've already given your answer with your stony silence. A statement concluded, we workers have every right to take all action deemed necessary to protect our jobs, regardless or whether you choose to sanction them or not. If you will not fight the layoffs, then get out of the way so that UPS workers can do it ourselves, unquote. And remember that the Teamsters represent a lot more than just UPS. So Sean O'Brien has a lot more to worry about, and he's got a very different set of priorities than the UPS workers that he screwed over last year. Right. Things do not get any better for our friends over at the Teamsters. Friends, quote unquote. As I'm doing research and I searched, hey, just give me a Google search for the word or a Twitter search for the word Teamsters. I uncovered this, which was posted on July 4th, Independence Day, by a guy by the name of Dennis Yu. Dennis Yu tells a story. Dennis me? No, not Dennis, not Dennis Reef. Dennis Yu. Dennis me, Dennis, Dennis, Dennis Yu. Dennis me? Dennis. Um, Dennis, Dennis us. I'm sorry, I will not do the rush hour joke. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Dennis says, my friend Alex who's on first? is a pilot at Allegiant Airlines. At dinner last <laughs> night, we laughed about how, how I fly even more than he does. Allegiant has been the butt of many jokes, but their pilots have been mistreated and underpaid. Largely because the Teamsters, yes, that Teamsters, Jimmy Hoffa and trucker drivers, <laughs> have done a poor job of handling yeah. contract negotiations. Uh -huh. Wait, you mean you mean Sean O'Brien isn't a top negotiator? No. He, ain't no, he ain't no Jimmy Hoffa, is he? Because of this delay, no broken kneecaps in any negotiation. Because Bring of this delay, back. okay, Allegiant cannot fix poor working conditions for pilots and cannot hire enough pilots, leading to operational issues. Wall Street has hammered the stock, sending it from one thirty to forty nine as of yesterday. The Allegiant pilots hired me to wage a PR campaign to get attention on the issues, getting it approved, ready for this, via the Teamsters 2118. That's their local. Mm -hmm. We built their website. We recorded content like the picture below, and I'll show you that. We ran dollar a day campaigns and got millions of eyeballs on it. We did great work, which the Allegiant pilots agree, but the Teamsters don't want to pay. Ironic that they're mistreating don't. ironic that they're mistreating him since they hired him to bring attention to their plight. The Allegiant pilots are so unhappy with the Teamsters, they're leaving the Teamsters and switching to the ALPA Pilots Association, which is where most pilots are. So if you want to help me out, please comment Teamsters pay Dennis below so they can see it. The guy on the left is um the pilot, who's Alex, his friend. All right. Okay. And the, the Teamsters guy in charge is Greg Unterseer. Let him know what you think. And underneath is his LinkedIn. 
So if you want to go and send them a nice little message, you're certainly free to do that. Be polite, <laughs> as I would say. If you choose not to be, I can't stop mm -hmm. you. 48% engagement rate on this post. You guys rock. The problem is, is that he's only got 156 views on it. Yeah. Guy needs more eyeballs. Because, again, the Teamsters, what again, screwing over Jim Christensen. I know I, I responded also, and I said, hey, pay this guy. Okay? Um, yeah. <laughs> Dr. Nick says, I did learn from Kit and Hard Lens to be respectful. Be respectful. <laughs> but bad news, bad things are happening. I also wanted to mention one other thing about the Teamsters. You know, a couple of weeks ago, about about four weeks ago, we did a story about Amazon Labor Union and the Teamsters and how I was questioning what the hell's going on there and how we don't know what's going to happen. But as a, as a follow-up and as a side, when the New York Times decides to do a write-up about what happened, you can guess that it's some kind of a corporate capture that's doing some kind of a fluff piece. And we know what's going on there. Oh, God, not the Poodork Times. This is a snow job. All right, and I'm not going to read this article. I wanted to bring the headline. And it's, this is the scrappiness. How the Teamsters and a homegrown union plan to take on Amazon while we completely side with the bosses every other time and side for genocide and and... Push for profits and squeeze you dry every moment. Fuck you, New York Times. All I got to say is fuck you. Keep your hands off workers because we see you. All right. Don't talk about They know nothing about what's going on with workers and you. All this not. They don't know anything about it except from the boardroom. Keep your name out our mouth. Or keep our name out your mouth. That too. But I did want to point out one thing that the team that the teamsters actually did okay with but it also ties into this whole amazon teamsters thing you know the teamsters have offered all kinds of support to amazon labor union and they claim that they're asking nothing in return but do we really believe that do we really believe that forever there'll be no ask of anything in return Three. No, of course not. Why Why no, should we ever ask for fucking things? The reason why I you say know? that is I found this, again, while I was searching. Um, actually, I found this through... <laughs> Here's another story. We did an article a few months back uh, about a, an aggregator labor site called laborunionnews.com. And about, eight, about a month ago... About a month ago, the guy who runs that website reached out to me. His name is Peter List. Turns out he was a former union mm. buster. He said, as it turns yeah. out, the article that Mike wrote was really Allegedly. kind of a smear piece. And that's not what I'm doing. I'm really trying to aggregate all sides of it. And I'll give you, and I was offering Mike, a free premium paid membership so you can see all the articles that I curate and aggregate and that I'm not pushing any one agenda or the other. Okay. So I've been reading these things as it, you know, as he publishes them and going through and he'll post 50 or 60 articles. He posts people that are hiring at different unions and it it's a pretty decent aggregator. I have, I have to say for a paid one, I mean, I would make it probably free, but I understand people's time is worth something. But I found this in his paid pretty, section. Pretty, pretty, pretty good. I found that in his paid section, and I want to give credit where credit's due because he turned me around a little bit on, in this case at least, because he found this one that Amazon drivers are striking over labor violations at Skokie Station in Illinois, all right, and they're doing it okay. with help with help from the Teamsters. Okay, of course. After, after Amazon drivers in Skokie went on strike last month over alleged violations of federal labor laws, more than a dozen members of Illinois. Congressional delegation have demanded the company refrain from union busting tactics. Again, with a strongly worded I'm letter. Sorry, where? Illinois. Where? Skokie. Where? What? Sorry, you are mispronouncing that state. You know you are. No. Illinois. Hear you. Illinois. 
Illinois. Illinois. <laughs> a group of 104 drivers <laughs> organized with Teamsters Local 705 <laughs> have called for Amazon to, reor to recognize the union and negotiate a contract. Yeah, Amazon's good at not recognizing unions and stonewalling negotiating contracts. The drivers are employed by contractor Four Star Express Delivery, and they claim Amazon retaliated against their organizing efforts by terminating the contractor's agreement. Quote, every Amazon driver knows who our true employer is, striking driver Lu Giancato said in a statement. We wear their uniforms and drive their trucks. They decide whether we can be hired or fired. We make them their profits, and we organize a union with the Teamsters for our fair share. And got fired for it. Okay. Thanks, Sean O'Brien. Yep. <laughs> yeah. That's your Work fair share. Workers showed up at Amazon's DIL-7 facility in Skokie with what they said was documentation showing a majority of them were in favor of joining the union, according to video from the Teamsters. No, we don't accept mm. that, one of the managers says. Organizers uh -huh. demanded $30 an hour, 40 hours of guaranteed work, and better benefits. Currently, they're paid about $20 an hour, are rarely scheduled for a full work week, and have expensive and low-quality health insurance, according to the Teamsters. The negative emotions that Amazon preys on, fear, isolation, manipulation, an organizer tells striking workers in that video, we exist above with that pride, dignity, and honor. We, we exist above that, uh-huh. Well, we try to. Um... But they're making it hard when they get rid of the I people that are, that's like, that are existing above that. It, this reminds me of that Michael Jackson song. Free isolation, manipulation. Beep, 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 beep. Anyway, just my brain's dumb. And my apologies. On, on Tuesday, mm. U.S. reps Jan <laughs> Schakowsky. They don't really care about us. That's, that's Michael Jackson? Okay. I think. Anyway, on Tuesday, U.S. reps Jan it's Schakowsky, Chewy Garcia... So. And Nikki Budzinski sent a letter to Amazon CEO Andy Jassy about reports of intimidation and retaliation against the Skokie workers. They were joined by 10 other members of Congress, every House Democrat from Illinois other than Brad Schneider. Why wouldn't mm, anyone else from Congress join that letter to... Well, it's not my state, so why should I give a shit? As if there weren't fucking Amazon facilities in every state around the country. Are you fucking kidding me? Yeah. Also, how did we pass up Chewy Garcia, the best Ben and Jerry's flavor that hasn't been invented yet? Chew Chewy Garcia? You know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Chewy Garcia. Unfair labor practices um, level unfair labor practice charges <laughs> leveled against Amazon include allegations that the company terminated employees for organizing, surveilled union activities implemented a hiring freeze in response to unionization efforts, suppressed pro-union speech on message boards, pretextually altered employment terms to limit union activity, and sought to permanently close the facility in response to union organizing, according to the letter. This week's letter from most of Illinois uh, congressional Democrats follows another oversight letter sent to Amazon last month by a bipartisan group of senators following up on another one in February. Amazon doesn't give a fuck, folks. The Senate has not no. received a serious response, according to the letter, which described Amazon's responses as insufficient so far and will continue to be because they're buying all you motherfuckers. Tchaikovsky, yep. Garcia, and Budzinski's letter noted that this is not the first time the world's largest e-commerce company has been accused of violating the 1935 labor law that still governs unionization efforts in the United States. Union busting is disgusting. Amazon yeah. has now been accused of several serious yeah. breaches I mean, of the NLRA. Thank you. And I didn't even know it. You didn't know it. But Amazon has now been accused of several serious breaches of the NLRA in recent years. And as you're aware, an, NL, NL, an NLRB administrative law judge recently ruled that you broke federal labor law with your public comments regarding increased union efforts by Amazon workers and advised that you should avoid threatening your employees with similar comments in the future. Advised. 
In accordance with that ruling and advice, Stop. Amazon... You violated the law. Basically, Amazon was ordered to notify employees at its facilities that the NLRB has found that it violated federal, federal labor law. And they did so very tepidly. The members of Congress asked Amazon to respond by July 15th, which they might if they feel like it, because nothing will happen to them if they don't. Yeah. As members of the Illinois delegation, we are committed to ensuring that the Amazon that Amazon respects the rights of its workers, <laughs> including its DSP uh -huh. drivers in Skokie. We ask for your commitment to refrain from threats of intimidation and retaliation as DSP drivers exercise their rights to organize or, a union. Or what? And if they're so gonna get the Boeing guy right. to show up. And if they so choose <laughs> Bargain collectively to negotiate in good faith uh, to secure improvements in their wages and working conditions uh, with fuck. with ice cream and rainbows and unicorns, too. That's what Congress is basically begging Amazon to do. An Amazon spokesperson issued a statement to reporters on, after last week's action. This protest was initiated and has been attended by mostly outside organizers and individuals who don't work for Amazon and has no impact on our operations or our ability to deliver for customers. Because it's all about operations and ability to deliver for customers. Forget about the people who actually do work there. Four Star Express Delivery is an independently owned company that voluntarily closed its business on May 30th and no longer delivers for mm -hmm. Amazon. Yeah, they voluntarily closed because you cut yeah. the contract that was keeping them in business. According to the layoff notice provided to state commerce regulators, Four Star Express Delivery LLC, with an address listed in Skokie, announced that it would lay off 104 workers on June 25th after providing two weeks' notice. Its stated reason, You're lost fired. contract. <clears throat> Owner Jerry Maros told workers the company is, that has lost its principal client in the first week of June in an unforeseeable development after a majority of workers sign union cards. Huh. How about that? Teamsters about president, that? Sean O'Brien, said Amazon responded to workers by exercising their right to organize with bullying and law-breaking and that the company's delivery service provider, or DSP, program was exploitative, which it is. He says, but Amazon drivers in Skokie refuse to be intimidated by the white-collar criminals running this company. Like you? You're a white-collar criminal, Sean. Mm -hmm. The Teamsters Union... Jeffrey, Jeffrey Bezos. The Teamsters Union appreciates the support of elected officials who are showing real backbone against corporate America by standing with these brave workers. <laughs> Oh, no, not, not Chris. No, not Chris. Oh. <laughs> Other Amazon drivers organized no. with Teamsters have picketed more than 30 Amazon warehouses in an ongoing unfair labor practice strike, according to the union. And last month, Amazon warehouse workers, as we covered at the company's JFK 8 facility in Staten Island, voted to join the Teamsters with more than 98% of the ballots. Listen to that uh -huh. shit. Yeah, 98% uh -huh. out of a total. What's up with that? What's, What's up, up with that? that? Well, first of all, it wasn't 5,500 workers there. 10% of the fucking workforce voted. They didn't tell anybody. They gave yeah. nobody time to look at this thing. They gave nobody time to vote. What's up with that? What's, What's up, up with that? that? All right. <laughs> 5,500 workers there will become oh. members of a newly chartered, the newly, newly chartered Amazon Labor Union IBT or ALU IBT Local 1. Are you fucking kidding me? Thank you. I work for one of the richest men in the world, and I've had to skip meals to make sure my child eats and my bills are paid. Ebony Echeverria, one of the striking Skokie drivers, said, that just ain't right. Oh, God. Amazon stock oh. last month, by the way, hit a stock market valuation in, in excess of $2 trillion for the first time.
Thank you. Founder Jeffrey Bezos, who announced last year he was moving from Seattle what to Miami. Okay, this week disclosed plans to sell five billion worth in stock of stock in the company to bring his total windfall this year for offloading the record high stock to thirteen and a half billion dollars in twenty twenty four. Dude. Uh, and we're fighting for scraps when this motherfucker's cashing out 13 and a half billion this year. Oh, that's a good one. Yeah. Yeah. What's up with that? What's up with that? Kill your <laughs> What's up with that? What's up with that? I yeah. don't know what's up with that. Um you can clap for that. KYE, the Teamsters of the 90s backed my decision to seek out the best backdoor way before the internet ways, back. the internet days, well start uh, of 1993. Um, backdoor? Uh, hey now. Phrasing? Seriously. Um, crumbs is right. That's what they're trying to do is make us happy with crumbs. Uh, speaking of crumbs, if you have a couple of crumbs, Please feel free uh, to help us out and drop us a couple of bucks over there at a couple different ways to do it. Cash app, Patreon, PayPal, Rumble. We even get tips over on Rockfin. Um, Kofi, you see the QR code. You can hold up your cell phone and scan that with your phone app. Hold up the phone. It'll bring up a, a URL. You tap it. There. Not for Greta. Come on, man. If we can save the banks, if then we can save the world. I swear that's got to be AI. That's got to be AI. <laughs> he did not really say that. No. He did not really say that. No. no. Oh, Dude. doctor, not door, not back door. Hey, hey, you said back door way. Yes, I did. Doctor. Him a, it was it was doctor. doctor. Okay. 